YouTube, got a picture of my bench here. Um, gonna be working on another AR build. I have that. Uh, stripped upper, stripped lower. I've got this uh, long 15 inch free flow tube. Got a mag pull stock over here, some other parts. Buffer tube. Got all kinds of parts everywhere. Here's the barrel with the muzzle brake on it. 16 inch heavy barrel and I'm gonna start coating some of the other parts not really sure what yet but okay here it is I just got done doing the base coat for the dip I'm gonna use I'm not sure if I'm gonna use a real tree setup or some sort of a uh, like a uh, they call it alpha tango but it's a tax pattern the camo kind of smear. I think I'm probably going to go the ATAX route to see what it looks like on here. Then I've got a flat dark, dark earth grip that will should look alright with that and everything. So There it is. I'm probably going to start dipping here in a little bit and uh, finally get it together and then see what it looks like after that. So here is a <coughs> rifle build in progress build done on this AR just came back from the range with the crappier scope I'll do, a, I'll do a review on the scopes in a little bit this is a SWFA 10x42 I was gonna give that a try it looks pretty decent so far doesn't look like I'll have any issues with that so here is the finished product this is basically like an ATAX dip camo. I dipped it. I took all the parts. You can kind of see some of the progression. I didn't go through the dipping process as you can see on the other videos but uh, or actually the earlier part of this video. I got a bipod on here now. I did some KG gun coat to this mount. A little mount for the bipod. And I have a... I'll flip this over. I have a Sling mount on the other side, a KG gun coated that, that mag pull mount. It's basically I have a quick detach mount here on this stark grip. I have mag pull front and rear sights, flip ups. And I have just some handles on here that I welded that I'll uh, be able to pull off of here. I have a nickel boron bolt, basically a surplus ammo franken bolt is in this thing. It's a black hole barrel. Uh, basically a one inch diameter from here all the way down so it's a heavy barrel it's short and it's a black hole so it has a polygonal type barrel in it and uh, I'll get the card I believe it's in my car of the group that I shot with the crappier scope so hopefully with this setup maybe a little more barrel break in will be a little bit better a little bit of a cheek weld on here with the Magpul CTR buttstock on here. I don't know, I couldn't remember buttstock, but whatever. Um, I didn't, I normally put a ring back here for a single detach, but since this start grip has a quick detach on it, I didn't really uh, mess with that. I just left this with the factory style uh, buffer tube plate, basically. And I have a long, basically, release latch on this charging handle. And I have a JP trigger set up in here, which is basically a lighter pull in here. And it's a CMMG trigger group in this thing. It's pretty soft when I had it at the range. I really didn't have any trigger squeeze issues. It wasn't like I was pulling on an anchor or anything like that. And I have an H2 buffer inside this. I've been experimenting with the buffers. Brass basically kicks out at... I would say 4, maybe 5 o'clock max, which I think is pretty good. The cycle rate slowed way down, so I'm not getting way too much gas and quick cycling or anything like that. So this is it. This is the finished product. It's pretty sweet. It's a little heavy. I haven't weighed it, but I can probably do that in the future. But I would say it's probably right around... I know it's... Probably right around 10 pounds. 
308 I got 16 and 308 is pretty, uh, pretty heavy and that's a 24 inch barrel that's just a monster anyway so there it is my most recent build the pink one that I have on the video before this was the one right before that before this one and I had a light contour M4 barrel the KG gun coat seems to be working pretty good um, it's a lot better this is basically after I dipped all these parts I did a I did a Duracoat clear over everything so that the finish is real durable too. You can hit it with chemicals and it isn't going to wipe right off. Because the one thing I do know about uh, dipping with just the dip and everything after it's freshly done, you really don't want to hit it with any chemicals because it'll take that stuff right off from what I've experienced anyway. So you want to get a good hard clear coat over it before you really start messing with anything. And I KG gun coated the gas block in there. Finished product. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just uh, let me know. Uh... Alright, I have the uh, scope mounted on this new rifle. And I'm shooting at the 50. I'm going to try to get the scope zeroed. And then I'll check for grouping on this thing. It has a 1 and 8 whole 556 barrel 16 inch bull and I'll go into more detail later on once I get everything grouped but uh, if I will check the scope and then I'll go out to the wood out there that's a hundred hundred yards so I'll load this thing up give it a few shots There's a black square in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to shoot at the lower left hand corner so you get a nice point of reference. Flinched on that one. I'm come right a bit. That one went way high, so I'm gonna go down. That's closer. Fire one more. One right next to it. I'm going to come right just to click. Not exactly sure the accuracy of the scope right now either. It's a Swift. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's the one I put on there just to get the zero on it close. I'm going to probably run some SWFA Super Sniper versions on these ARs and uh, check all that. This scope has been reliable in the past, but I just don't have a lot of faith in it.
I see shots in the box. Better. We shall see. I'll check it again. So you can see on that bottom right target, I got some marks in there. Actually, let's see if I can move this over just a tiny bit. It's so sensitive. Zoomed way in. Set 100 yards. I'm going to try the upper right hand target now. Um, one, two of the two of the rounds were key hold, and then one was just a little bit away from that. So all of a sudden, the accuracy all of a sudden the last couple rounds is sharpened up. So I'm going to do it down. Let's just fire a few more. This is my last shot group because the range is going to be closing. So I'm going to. Just fire for effect on the top right target. Hopefully they all come within a decent amount. That was weird. I don't know what the fuck that was. target. Gun's empty. Something I forgot is this card. I basically was at the range before this video shooting this with that other scope. And here is the card that I cut out of the target. Basically, this is a little half inch square right here. I'll bring it in. Here's a shock group. That's basically one, two, three, five, six around that. So totals group size is probably a little bit over an inch. And then there's a few bullet holes that are, you know, pretty close to each other. But that's not too bad. It's just 55 grain plinking ammo is what I call it. There's 55 grain full metal jackets. Various brands. Just the cheapest is what I buy. None of the steel case stuff. It's all brass. It's not the ultra cheap. Because I don't want to run steel stuff through my ARs. But uh, that is the group. It'll probably tighten up a little bit. It was a little wild right at first. But as soon as the barrel started to break in a little bit, get a little bit of a bearing surface inside there, it, uh, it basically tightened up a lot. It, hopefully it gets a little tighter than that. I expect to with the, the barrel rigidness that I have and the better optic on there. The other optic didn't seem to hold zero very well. So I'm wondering if maybe it's screwed up. But I'll get it all figured out. But here's the card. I was going to show you that. And I'll probably throw that into the video somewhere. That's about it. Thanks.